This video will give us a chance to look at common factors and see how we can use common factors to analyze events that repeat in cycles. Let's get our page organized. Please be sure to put the date at the top of the page and the topic for this video will be common factors. Our essential question for the video will be what are common factors and how can we use common factors? First, let's remember what we mean by factor. As we've seen before, factors are whole numbers that are multiplied to get a product. As an example, let's look at the number 14. Right? So 14 has four factors. 1 and 14 would multiply to make 14, so they are factors of 14. And also 2 and 7 are, pro are excuse me, factors as well, because 2 times 7 makes a product of 14. Right? So these are kind of like the building blocks of numbers. In addition to working with factors, sometimes we want to look at the common factors of two or more numbers. A common factor is a factor that two or more numbers share. Let's look at an example. Let's look at the numbers 12 and 28. Okay. What common factors do these two numbers share? Make a list, pause and make a list here, of the factors for both 12 and 28. How'd you do? Does your list look like mine? The next thing we want to look at is whether they have any factors that they share, if they have any common factors. I see already that both lists have a 1, right? both lists have 2, and both lists have 4. These are their common factors. In addition to common factors, we also often look for the greatest common factor. You'll see me write this as the GCF, greatest common factor. In our example above, there are three numbers that they share, 1, 2, and 4. The largest of those is 4, so the greatest common factor is the 4. But why is it important to find the common factors? Let's look at a real-life problem uh, and see how we could use common factors to solve this and why it would be useful. Let's look at this situation. Jane and her friends are going camping. Jane wants to make snack packs of apples and bags of trail mix, right? So she wants to have apples and trail mix for her friends. She has right now 24 apples and 18 bags of trail mix. The problem is she has to divide these up among her friends. If she wants to make packs that are equal, so every friend is getting the same amount, how many packs can she make? And I wonder if there's more than one way that she could organize her food equally. We're going to look at each item separately. So I'm going to make a division down my page, and I'm going to look at the apples on the left and the trail mix on the right. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this all in this one little space here um, so that we can look at them side by side. So first of all, we know that there are 24 apples. Right? Jane could make one pack of all 24 apples. She could just take it and say, I'm going to have all the apples myself. I'll make one pack of 24. But that's certainly not the only thing she could do, right? She could also make two packs of 12. 2 times 12 would also make 24. If she wanted to, she could make 3 packs of 8. 3 times 8 would make 24 apples as well. So she could do 3 packs with 8 apples each. Or maybe she'd like to make 4 packs of 6 apples. In addition, she could make 6 packs of 4 apples. She could make 8 packs, each with 3 apples. She could also have 12 snack packs, each with two apples. Lastly, she could take all 24 apples, separate them out all into 24 different packs, and each have one apple. Do you notice anything about these numbers? You might notice that these are all the factors of 24. If I want to break the apples into separate groups, and I want to keep them as whole apples, right? I need to look at the factors. So the, this list of eight factors helps me know the eight different ways she could separate her apples evenly. Let's do the th same thing with the bags of trail mix. Without splitting the bags open, right, each person's going to get a complete mini bag of trail mix, 
How could we split these among her friends? I'm going to fill in my list just like I did for my apples. Why don't you pause and see if you're able to come up with the same options that I come up with. How'd you do? I came up with six different options. One pack of 18, two packs, each with nine mini bags of trail mix, three packs of six, six packs of three, nine packs of two, or she could split all the trail mix up and make 18 different snack bags, each with one small bag of trail mix. Again, do you notice that these are all the factors of 18? If I want to split the trail mix up evenly among all of the friends, or if Jane wants to in this case, we need to look at the factors. We can split it into one big bag, two, three, six, nine, or 18 small packs. Let's remember the original issue though. Jane wants to be sure that the snack packs are created equally. If she wants to make packs that are equal, the question is how many packs can she make? Right? and thereby figuring out how many friends she can give snacks to. Right? Also, I'm wondering, is there more than one way she could organize the food? To do this, we're going to look at the factors they share. So I have here my factors, right? just as a reminder. So we want to look at the factors that they share. We're looking for their common factors. right? So I can see that in both groups, I could make one huge pack, dividing my amounts equally. I also could make two packs, right? or three packs, or six packs. Right? If I divide my apples into eight different groups, that's great, but I can't divide my trail mix into eight even groups, right? because eight is not a factor of both of them. So we're just looking for the common factors. Using our common factors, let's look at our choices of how we could organize the packs. We could have one pack, and that one pack would have 24 apples and 18 trail mixes. That would be great if she decided not to share, right? She could take all of the apples and all of the trail mixes for herself. But if a friend wanted to come, she could also make two packs, and in each of those packs there would be 12 apples and nine trail mixes. If she needed enough for a third friend, she could make three packs, and each pack would have eight apples and six trail mixes. And lastly, her greatest option to bring the most people and provide snacks for the most amount of friends would be to have six packs with four apples and three trail mixes each. By using common factors, we were able to break up all of her snacks equally and see what her options were. Now, she might have to decide which one she thinks she would actually use, right? Which one do you think is the most reasonable? That's sort of depends on the situation, right, and how many people you want to bring. Okay. But in this example, we were able to see how common factors were able to be used in a real-life situation, and we want to make sure we answered our essential question. Did we see what common factors were, right, those numbers, those factors and building blocks that are common to two or more numbers, right, and did we see how we could use it in a real-life situation, right, or how we were able to use common factors to solve a problem. Hopefully, you were able to do both of those things. Right? We're going to have a chance to do some practice with this in class. Please make sure you have your notes ready. And as always, right, ask any questions that you might have. Sorry, that's a question mark. Ask any questions that you might have here in the margins.